solve y double prime plus y equals secant x. We're going to use variation of parameters. So the first step in variation of parameters is to make sure that your differential equation is in standard form. Usually that means just make sure that this here is a 1. So in this case, there's no issues there. Step 2. We want to solve the associated homogeneous equation. In other words, you take the left-hand side of your differential equation and you set it equal to 0. And you end up with the solution y sub c equals c sub 1, y sub 1, plus c sub 2, y sub 2. So this is the solution to the associated homogeneous equation. Step 3. We compute three determinants. That sounds harder than it is. The first one is the Ronskian of y1 and y2. So you have y1, y1 prime, and then here you have y2, y2 prime. Then you want to compute these other determinants, w1 and to figure out what w1 is, well, we're going to call this f of x. And what you do is, because it's w1, you put a 0 here and you put f of x here. And then you keep the second column of w, so w2 and then w2 prime. And then we compute w2. And in this case, it's w2, so you keep the first column, so w y1 and then y1 prime. Right? You keep the first column of w, and since it's w2, you put the 0 and the f of x in the second column. So in w1, you put the 0 and the f of x in the first column. In w2, you put it in the second column. So it's pretty easy to memorize. Step 4 is to compute u1. u1 is the integral of w1 over w dx, and then u2 is the integral of w2 over w dx. Step 5 is to write down the particular solution. So yp is equal to u1y1 plus u2y2. And step 6 is to write the final answer down. The final answer is yc plus yp. Let's go ahead and work this out carefully. It's a lot of steps, but once you do one of these on your own, you kind of got it. So the first step is to make sure it's in standard form, and we did that. Sec step two is to solve the associated homogeneous equation. So we have y double prime plus y equals zero. So now we'll write down the auxiliary or characteristic equation. So we have y double prime, so that's m squared, and then we have a y, so we just put one. Solving this gives us m squared equals negative 1. Taking the square root gives us m equals plus or minus i. So we have what's called complex conjugate solutions to our characteristic equation. And they're of the form alpha plus or minus beta i. So in this, alpha is 0 and beta is 1. And you know that the solution then is of the form c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. So in this case, alpha is 0, so e to the 0x is 1, so it's gone. So we end up with yc equals, it's just going to be cosine, oh, c1, whoops, c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. So easy to mess up, and these problems are so long. And this is an easier one. That's my c1. Okay, so there's yc. I'm going to kind of circle it. That's not the final answer, but I don't want to lose track of it. So step two is done. Step one is done. Step three, we have to compute these determinants. So we need to write down what y1 and y2 are. So y1 is cosine x, and y2 will be sine x. Now, if you mix them up, it doesn't matter. You get the same answer at the end. For example, if I had put the sine function here first and then cosine here instead, no big deal. So y1 prime, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of sine is cosine. And now we're ready to compute our determinants. So the first one is the Ronskian. So w, let's see, it's going to be y1, so cosine x. And then the derivative of y1, so negative sine x. And over here we get sine x, that's y2. 
and the derivative of sine is cosine. We take the determinant, so we multiply these, so we get cosine squared x, subtract, and then we multiply these, and so we get parentheses negative sine squared x. Very easy to mess up. So w is equal to cosine squared x plus sine squared x, and that's equal to 1. So let me write it again, so w is equal to 1. Okay, I'm going to circle that. Again, that's not the final answer, but it's very easy to lose track. All right, to compute the other determinants, keep in mind our f of x is the secant of x. Okay, f of x is the secant of x. So w1 is equal to, let's see, for w1, you replace the first column. So 0 and then f of x. f of x was secant x. And then you keep the second column. So sine x, cosine x, right? The y2 is sine x, and then the derivative of y2 is cosine x. So here you multiply. So you get 0 minus and then sine x times secant. So sine x times secant x. This is negative sine x. Secant is 1 over cosine. So we end up with sine over cosine, which is tangent. So this is negative tangent x. So w1, I'll write it over here, is negative tangent of x. And again, I'm going to circle it. It's not the final answer, but it's really easy to mess up in these problems. And then w2, this time we keep the first column. So we're going to keep cosine and the negative sign. Really nice way to remember it. And it's w2, so we replace the second column with 0 and secant. Then you multiply cosine times secant. And then 0 times negative sine is simply 0. Secant is 1 over cosine, so we have 1 over cosine, and this is 1. So w2 is equal to 1. Again, I'm going to circle it, but it's not the final answer. All right, we are done with this brutal step. So step 3 is done. Step 4, we have to compute the u's. So u1 and u2. So u1 is the integral of w1 over w with respect to x. So let's see, we circled everything to make it a lot easier. So w1 is negative tangent, and w is 1. So we're just going to get negative tangent of x dx. And if you forgot how to integrate this, no worries, we'll do it. This is negative sine x over cosine x dx. And let's let u equal cosine. So that du is negative sine x dx, going really fast. <laughs> So this is equal to negative, no, not negative, because du already has the negative. So this is du, whoa, over u. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And don't worry about putting the plus c. Wait, uh, it gets absorbed, so there's no need to, to write it. So we have that u1, I'll write it over here, is the natural log of the absolute value of cosine x. And again, I'm going to circle it. It's not the final answer. Uh, but we're going to need it for step 5. And now u2, that's a music group, <laughs> uh, so this is w2 over w dx. And so let's see, what is w2? Well, I'm glad it's circled. w2 is 1, w is 1, beautiful, we get 1 dx, so that's just x. So I'll write it over here, u sub 2 is equal to x. All right, we are almost almost there. Now we have to write down yp. So it's u1, y1, plus u2, y2. Now, y1 is way up here. You can barely see it. So I'm going to write it down again over here. So we have y1 equals cosine x. And then y2 is equal to sine x. Okay. And so now let's go ahead and write everything down. So yp is equal to u1, y1 plus u2, y2. We said u1 was the natural log of the absolute value of cosine x. And we said that y1 was cosine x. Plus. And then u2 is x. And then y2 is sine x. So this here is yp. So this guy here, this is our yp. And if you recall, yc was c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. 
And so finally, we are ready to write the final answer down. So y, make it big, <laughs> it's yc plus yp. So you add them up. So yc plus yp. So y is equal to, well, yc is this stuff. So c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. And then plus, we've written down yc. Now we're going to write down yp. I'm going to put the cosine in front of the natural log just because. So this is cosine x. I'll put it in parentheses too. Natural log, absolute value of cosine x. Plus, and then we have the x and the sine x. Wow, that took a long time to do. And this is probably one of the easiest variation of parameter problems uh, we could have done. It's a long method. Um, I hope this helps.